Genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you. All right, welcome to episode 168 of 15 Minutes of Genius. We're getting back in full swing. Uh, we had a, kind of a lapse of no episodes for about a month or two. I know the world was on fire. A lot of people were protesting that we didn't have our episodes up. But now we're back so everyone can calm down and get back to your normal normal life because we are back. Everything's good again. And uh, we had some great guests on episode 166, 167. And now we're swinging into uh, episode 168. Uh, just a couple laundry list items. Make sure to give us five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I, I, I could care less about. But Apple Podcasts, please make sure to give us five stars on there. And also LinkedIn, we post our episodes. So if you need to get notified uh, when an episode goes live on LinkedIn, you could follow me. You could follow Genius Juice. You can follow 15 Minutes of Genius or CPG Vibes. One of those four or all four and you will be notified when there is an episode being posted um, on LinkedIn. So without further ado, our guest, good friend of mine, colleague, you know, I, I've known him just a few short months, but literally in these, in these months, he's become closer and closer. We talk all the time, and we're also uh, working on a crowdfunding campaign that we'll talk about uh, later on in this episode. His name is David Cisneros, and he is the CEO and I say co-founder, right? Or founder or co-founder? Co-founder. Co-founder of Orgo Brands. A little bit about Orgo Brands. They are creating a new way to supply the U.S. and countries around the world with healthier, more authentic, and more sustainable foods from the origin. Hence the name Orgo. We de they develop products that support better living for their customers and people that make them. As important as healthy and authentic products are, they also work towards sustainable practices, including human and environmental initiatives and everything they do. Their brands, because they have a kind of this umbrella of different brands under Orgo, they have Chantico Agave, they have Avenidas, Avenidas Coffee, and they also have Gila, Gila, Gila. barbecue yeah. salsa. Perfect. Got to get back to my Spanish days where the G is an H. Um, so, David, how are you doing? Fine. How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, we, uh, you're becoming a pretty frequent guest within the uh, genius network of podcasts here. He, uh, you're on... CPG Vibes uh, a couple weeks back, sharing your story, and now you're here. Um, so tell us, you got a hell of a story. I mean, from being in politics to being in business for nearly 30 years, um, your family history, which I've read through. I don't know where to begin. I'm going to let you choose where you want to begin here. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Actually, yeah, my uh, my family's been in, it, there's all these hidden stories, as you know, Alex, and in America. One of them is called the Hispanos. And it's a group of Hispanics that actually have been in northern New Mexico for many generations. And we can trace our roots back to Mexico and Spain. And uh, then uh, in the 1850s, uh, Hispanos started moving into the southern Colorado, San Luis Valley. And then I was born there and, and, and live now in Denver, uh, where my family moved. We, there was not enough water in the valley. My dad was a rancher um, and a farmer, and we, we grew food. And, and the, the water ran out, basically, for smaller farmers. So we moved to Denver. So, you know, my family was raised, you know, my, my, my uncle was a minister. Uh, my dad worked in parks and recreation. We didn't have a lot of money. So every Sunday after church, we get our whole family, which is about 40 people. I've shown you pictures, Alex. Um, and to be honest with you, most of the time we couldn't, frankly, afford like protein, like chicken. So we would have flour tortillas, uh, mostly green chili from Hatch Valley or Pueblo, Colorado, uh, and, and pinto beans and uh, because we cooked big pots. And over the years, as I've worked in CPG, you know, food business for almost 30 years, I wanted to, you know, go back to my roots and, and this traditional idea of really tasty, good, healthy food, but take it a step further kind of in this Latin fusion idea, which I'm glad to share with your, your listeners. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, what's really cool is really just the sourcing story. We've talked about it before on privately and also just another podcast, which is what separates you from all the other, you know, Hispanic based food companies that are out there. So let's, uh, let's dig into that. What makes you different and unique 
with your brand? Well, there's a lot of ways. We don't we don't just put a label on anything like a ketchup, right? And you know, to be honest with you, a lot of Mexican food in the U.S. has lost its origin and its authenticity. You know, some might call it Tex-Mex. That's made by large companies. All of our product core ingredients come from the origin. So, for example, Gila, we call it Monstero de Gila or Gila Monster, barbecue salsa. We have two flavors. Uh, one is from the Hatch Valley, which, again, has Hatch Valley green chile. Our second one is from Sonora, Mexico, and it has a chiltepen or bird peppers, also agave. We're doing a third flavor from Honduras that's going to be coming out for next barbecue season. That's a secret, but I'll let you know when it comes out. Uh, you know, obviously agave, it only really comes from one place in the in the world. There's a few other small uh, growing areas, but really it comes from Jalisco and mostly around Guadalajara. And so, again, and then on coffee, you know, Avenida's coffee is just Guatemalan coffee. And our, our, our point in that is that the coffee is coming from the origin is this beautiful coffee. It doesn't need to go to Italy to put another name or put Folgers on it or anything else. It's it's premium coffee. We say directo de la finca, which means direct from the farm. So everything is origin. And then we do a lot of other stuff, which I'm glad to discuss with, with our friends today. Yeah, there's, there's really a lot there about the sourcing story, about how the product is made, the authenticity of it. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, what makes products successful is um, how clean they are and how they taste. And I think like you've nailed both of those. And also what a lot of people don't know just from meeting you is your is your background that you talked about earlier, right? They have a Hispanic background, they are relatives, distant relatives, you know, or generations before moved here. And so ha remind me, how long has, has your ancestry been in the Colorado area, because that's where you reside currently, right? Yeah, over 150 years. That's, a, that's amazing. Ranchers and farmers, and it's a mm. quiet story. You know, you don't hear it a lot, but, um, you know, we're really proud of our, our traditions. And, you know, we just had a family reunion last year. A Cisneros family reunion had 150 people. So we're still going strong after, you know, literally hundreds of years in in what is now America. <laughs> yeah. These are literally what David is sharing. These are stories you just, like you said, you don't hear a lot about, you know, usually, you know, when I meet someone here, their great grandfather, you know, moved here or something, you know, they were in Europe and then they came here. It's more of a traditional story about a traditional immigrant story. Uh, but David's is really, really special. It spans back multiple generations You've traced it back to, you know, cardinals, right, that were in Spain. And uh, it's just the whole story is, 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 is really amazing. And how you've also, through your business, right, and through your food, you're preserving your family heritage as well. It's great. Yeah, we've been working in Hispanic foods we for many, many years, other brands. And we decided, look, we know all about Hispanic foods after these years. We work with companies like Cholula Hot Sauce. And we decided to take these ideas and, and bring them home into the Southwestern concept from Northern New Mexico and Southern Colorado. And, you know, we also want to do other things. You know, we're very serious. You know, there's a lot of bells and whistles sometimes on big companies about, you know, social responsibility. But we've been doing things for a decade already. We work with Trees for the Future, for example, for carbon offset. Every one of our shipments that goes out has carbon offset and all of our international shipments, because believe it or not, we are shipping international too, are also carbon neutral. So, and then we work with organizations like with uh, Shantika, we work with Homeboy, which is a, a gang uh, program in actually in California is where it started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we work with a local division here also in Colorado. So we're paying attention to social responsibility, as you said, true origin stories, authenticity, which people want. And, and then, you know, basically looking at other things like, is it healthy? You know, we, we don't want to put anything. Our products are gluten-free. Our products are non-GMO. Our, our agave is organic. You know, we really pay attention to it, not for the bells and whistles, because but because we've been raised on healthy, natural foods our whole lives. I have a question about um, the agave, because I'm a big, you know, just alternate sweetener 
type guy. Like I don't, I don't just put pounds of, you know, cane sugar in my food. Hopefully other people are not doing that either. Right. Where can you get this agave? Is it, it's, I remember you were saying it's, it's an, it's a nectar and a powder. Is it both or one or the other, but and where can you find it? Well, it's, yeah, we started out with uh, two syrups and one is wild and one is raw. And everybody knows what raw is and, and wild is literally picked mm. from wild lands in, in Jalisco. Um, by hemidors, which are farmers uh, in, in that with special devices to cut out the agave plants and the piña that is the core of that, the pineapple. Um, so, you know, we, I'm sorry, I, I, tell me, ask me your question again. Where can you find uh, the agave nectar currently? Yeah, we're doing all kinds of great things with it. We're, we're obviously online and we have our own Shopify on our websites. Um, we're selling on Amazon. Uh, we're getting on to other uh, e-commerce sites like Fair, Pod. We're also now in the Kahi distribution group, and we have brokers established in uh, up and down the West Coast, Pacific Northwest, San Francisco, LA, um, Denver, Midwest. So we're starting to get into uh, what I call brick and mortar stores as well. So, you know, this is our really our first full year of really starting to hit the markets. And one of the reasons we're doing crowdfunding is we want to invest everything that we get into hiring more people, doing more social marketing mm -hmm. uh, and building the brands, hiring more brokers and, and distributors. Well, let's uh, on that note, let's get into your crowdfunding campaign. I know we're working together on that and um, I do uh, some consulting, just a little uh, personal plug on that. I do, I do personal consulting for uh, companies looking to do crowdfunding. I keep it to a small client roster so that I have enough time to really spend, uh, have that personal touch with each and every client that I work with and make sure that they hit their goals. And it's, as you know, it's a lot of detail, looking at a lot of documents, looking at copy, images, launching campaign pages, the legality around it, the timing around it, you know, reservations, private, public. There's so many details there. So I'm happy to be helping you guys. And now with your crowdfunding campaign. Um, now what I have on this really cool StreamYard, um, you know, podcast is I could share screens, but I know that your campaign is not live yet, but this episode will be getting posted, uh, the second week in June. Um, okay. you know, this being recorded right now in May. So you let me know, cause we don't script this. I can either show the page or we can talk about the website where to find your campaign page because it will be posting after June 15th. Let us know, David, what's good for you. And we can let the people know how to invest. Absolutely. And yeah, we're going live and launching on uh, Monday, June 19th. June 19th. Yeah. Yes. So we're really excited about that. And as you know, there are certain opportunities to share information with people before it's called test the waters. Certainly glad to share information with people and, and talk with you about ways to do that. Also just want to say, honestly, just to give you a plug, we really do appreciate all the work that you do. You really have helped Thank us you. a lot. And I really mean that. So anybody who's listening, you know, truly Alex, there's a lot of people out there that make promises, but Alex is really doing a, a good job for us and we really appreciate it. I appreciate um, that, David. Thank you so much. No, it's, no, it's true. And and so uh, basically in the next couple of weeks, you know, we're going out uh, communicating with people. As you know, Alex, there's a process of, uh, excuse me, of community, going out to your community with emails ahead of the launch and after the launch. Start Engine has a group now, I think of 1.7 million investors, which is really exciting. And then we're also going to go out to the public through LinkedIn and, and perhaps in social media and just tell our story. I think if you look at the reality of Hispanic foods, Hispanic population, but also everybody loves, as we know, Spanish food, Latin food, Mexican food, whatever you want to call it. It's growing. It's booming. Everybody loves it. It's, it's, it's for not just for Hispanic people. So, you know, the, the numbers are really exciting and dynamic, and we think people really want to be part of it, invest in it, and, and help us to grow and bring these great tasting foods and authentic foods to people throughout the U.S. Love it. Love it. So it's a great, great mission, great story. Obviously, the, the team, you know, you have, uh, I think, over combined over 60 years, right, of experience in the CPG arena between David and his team, you know, Stephen, Eric, 
And so a uh, great team behind us with a ton of experience to build brands and scale them. And they are uh, not only, you know, going for one product line, but multiple product lines within the that origin story of Hispanic, authentic Hispanic food. So what what can we share if this is going to be released in mid-June? What can we share to get people over to either you or to the test the waters on start engine or your actual campaign? What what would you like to share on here for the viewers? Well, I think for right now, you know, uh, basically, interestingly enough, we're, you know, uh, going out with, uh, sorry, flyers okay. uh, to help people with our QR code. But I think for right now, people who are listening to it uh, and, and certainly can facilitate this through you, Alex, is, you know, going to oregobrands.com and, and going on there. And we have a, you know, our, our landing page is going to give you some preliminary information on the brand. And as, as we go live, we'll put uh, connections and buttons to be able to go into Start Engine and actually find out about how you can invest. Perfect. And uh, again, it's going to be on Start Engine. So um, once the campaign gets going, eventually you can also just Google Start Engine Orgo Brands. You can find it that way. But again, best way is going to orgobrands.com. I'm sure you're going to have some some kind of sign up on there as well That's by right. email, so you can notify people on milestones, notify when it goes live, all these things. So um, again, we'll, we'll have we'll have the website in the comment section of this post as well. So uh, David, so it is a shorter interview. We have a next segment, which is probably going to blindside you, but I know you're a creative, you're, you're a great, you're, 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 you're a businessman, also super creative at the same time. You know, this guy can write music, okay? Um, so- this is going to be something he's going to nail. He's really good at thinking on his feet. So this is called rapid fire questions. We make we have all of our guests go through this and okay. here it is. Rapid fire questions. All right. The, you had no idea this was coming, right? This is no. all. No. Okay. Like that's, what, that, that's why I like it. All right. So we're going to go into um, a bunch of questions. We have 15 questions. I wonder where I got that number from. <laughs> as fast as you can, one minute or less if you can. Um, and just first answer that comes to your head, just just say it. So okay. here we go. All right, question number, and these are not too hard. You'll, you'll get them. Uh, for music, which decade is the best? The 70s, 80s, or 90s? 70s. Last, it was, it's really funny. You said 70s and our guest uh, last week were the Painterland sisters. I'm also advising them on their WeFunder campaign. And they're like in their 20s and early 30s, and they're like 70s. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. Every gen so many generations love the 70s. I, I'm a big fan of the 70s too. Yeah, me too. What do you do for exercise? Well, I used to go to the gym until COVID, and now you know we go up to the mountains a lot here in Colorado. We just start up at Winter Park this weekend, do lots of hikes, biking. Um, I love walk. We have two dogs. We walk our dogs. So mostly walking, biking and hiking. Cool. Movie you can watch an unlimited amount of times. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Love that movie. Love that movie. <laughs> the things, the things we do, but do not say, I believe the name of his book is anyway. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> had, like me, you had me at hello. You had me at hello. seems like Tom Cruise is all about movies where, He's at the top, he hits rock bottom, and he makes his way back. That's like right. Right. every right. movie of his is, is like that. Yeah. Um, uh, favorite country to travel. I'm sorry, I skipped one. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Favorite country to travel to? Uh, I lived in Japan for many years. I really feel ho at home there, so I love to go to back to Japan whenever I can. Which, uh, which prefecture or city did you like the most? I lived in Tokyo. Nice. Uh, in a town called Kichijoji. And um, so, yeah, I, I lived in the, this massive city, but it was just amazing to go out and see Takanagawa go, to, you know, we, I climbed Mount Fuji, I mm. climbed some other mountains. So, and I learned a lot from, including Japanese, Honoskoshi Ansmasne. I speak Japanese pretty well, and I love studying Buddhist culture and, and, um, especially Zen Buddhism, which is strong in Japan. Mm, amazing. Amazing. Favorite Star Wars character? Um, I, I, I was going to say Darth Vader. 
Right, <laughs> say, <laughs> because I like I, I I think the most fascinating character is Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, where he became Darth Vader, because it's a story of obviously good and evil, and you know the path that we take and how he's he didn't start out that way and how he ended up that way. Yeah, and at the very end of the movie, he came back to the to the Jedi side, right, with exactly. his son. With his son, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it took him almost dying, but he realized what's most important in life, which is, you know, not to be a, an evil overlord, but to be connected with your family and leave a great legacy. So, right. Um, all right. What is your spirit animal? Spirit animal is probably, well, I know it's the hawk because we have hawks up here and I've studied a lot about hawks and I love hawks. So it's hawks. Nice. <laughs> Makes sense. And yeah. uh, do you like to drive an SUV, a coupe, or a truck? Oh, that's that's a really good question. I desperately want a truck, you know, a beautiful truck when I get older that I can tool around depending where I live. Yeah, you should go for the Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> that I that that's the, I just drove a Tesla last week. I love it, but you know, I just want one of those old Fords, you know, stick Pick up. Yep. Yep. Good stuff. Ford F-150, baby, all the yeah, way. Right. <laughs> For food, salty or sweet? Salty. Favorite day of the week and why? Monday, because it's a, a dark horse and everybody hates it. And I, I've been working on this idea of whenever I feel negative energy is to take breaths and, and turn things around and say, why isn't Monday an opportunity? It sounds corny, but to start the week out right and, and, and move up from there. So I like I like Mondays. Awesome. Awesome. Great share. Uh, which uh, ride, or I guess ride sharing, they call it Uber or Lyft. Which one do you prefer? Uber. The greatest of all time, LeBron James, Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant? Oh, my goodness. Wow. I've been watching all those. You know, I watched the Michael Jordan documentary. I, I, yeah, I have to say Michael Jordan. And, and for a very interesting reason, you know, I travel a lot around the world and everywhere I went for 25 years, Michael Jordan was the 23 was all you saw that Chicago Bulls t-shirt everywhere. He was truly a universal phenomenon in a way that Kobe and, and LeBron aren't. Uh, they're all great players, but I, I do have, I do love Michael Jordan. Yeah. I got to watch that. Um, the new movie called, I think I believe it's called air. Um, That's a good about, movie. about yeah, Air that. Jordan and how the, you know, the licensing deal and, it was worth, you know, billions of dollars. And I really got to see that one. You got to see it. It's a really good movie. You saw it? You saw it? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Good stuff. Amazon Prime, right? I think. Or is it Parent? I can't remember which streaming it's on. It's on Amazon Prime now. Amazon yeah. Prime. We got to Now I got to buy it. Yeah. Um, all right. So Terminator 1 or Terminator 2, which one did you like better? Oh, wow. That's, there's been so many Terminators. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and most of them are not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just have to say, number one, because it was introducing a great concept and our dear friend, I'll be back, uh, you know. Your, your former governor. Um, just, yeah, I love when they introduce new genres. Like every time I see a great movie that I love, like The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, I think mm -hmm. that's going to be the last great movie or series. And then somebody does something amazing. So, and my, my son, my eldest is on film studies. He's a film editor at college and he's showing me all about how, how they make these movies. And it's really cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And Terminator 1, I mean, not only filmed in L.A. like two, but number one was filmed at the Griffith Park Observatory, the very beginning. Yeah. Oh, OK. And cool. such a big fan of I mean, L.A., it's hard to find nature -y areas. Right. Um, unless you really travel. And it's cool that Griffith Park is like right in the middle of like Hollywood, Studio know, City, right? like like right. It's like this nature -y, huge area. Mm -hmm. Great golf course, uh, great observatory, just away from all the traffic. It's it's a pretty magical place. And you can see the Hollywood sign right from yeah, the observatory. Exactly. As well. I love that place. I love that place. I went to UCLA for a couple semesters because they had a special program. So I learned all about uh, the Griffith Observatory and Fat Burgers. Yeah, those two. <laughs> and in and out too, right? You got to go to in and out while you're out here. So uh, that's funny. It's Griffith Observatory. And Fabber, it's like two <laughs> they go like together, opposite right? spectrum. They go together. You can yeah. bring the food to the observatory and enjoy a meal while looking over L.A., right? Exactly. All right. So I like how you think. Favorite food or drink? Uh, they talk about food and drinks. 
Favorite food or drink if you're stuck on a deserted island? You cannot say anything from Orgo brands and you cannot say Genius Juice. Well, I, yeah, I ordinarily would say Genius Juice, but I would say probably just straight up pasta. Nice. Just pasta, yeah. You can do seafood pasta out there, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that has been Rapid Fire Questions with David Cisneros with Orgo Brands. And I'm going to play this. There we go. Turn a little louder here. A little applause for our guest. All right. Domo, domo. domo. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Thank you, right, in Japanese? Yeah. All right. So this has been episode 168. Um, again, if you'd like to check out their website, and we'll have the comp, we'll have it in the comments below, origobrands.com. Yeah. O-R-I-G-O, brands, plural, dot com. And uh, also look out for their uh, their crowdfunding campaign, Start Engine. You can go to their website, as mentioned, to find out about their, their crowdfunding campaign and support and invest in their brand. Um, anything else, David? No, thank you, Alex, for having me. It's great to talk with everybody. Look forward to talking again. I uh, hope everyone has a great day. Yeah, thank you again for joining us. And then uh, we'll be back in the next week or two with another episode. We'll, do, we'll be doing weekly episodes here on LinkedIn. So uh, thank you again for joining us and stay genius, my friends. Thank you. Genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you. <laughs>